anything you want. I'm pretty nervous right now. So, it's like an OSCE, which means I memorized everything I could. But the moment I have to improvise, I'm going to get an email the other night. It's going to be immediately so for those who don't know, when you study for step one, you use this program called Google. It's a question block. And I, it was pretty bad in February for me. I was getting some dumb stuff wrong, genetics, cellular transport, really easy stuff. And I was feeling bad. I'm thinking, wow, if Office of Medical Education saw this, they'd make me retake AP Bio. Then I got some ethics questions wrong. I'm like, wow, not only am I dumb, but I'm going to hell. Statistics question wrong on mean, median, mode. And I'm like, wow, at this rate, I'm going back to fourth grade. Um, but uh, I, I come from a very privileged background. Both my parents are physicians, and they're supporting me. But they're on the older side, and I, they don't really under step, understand step one right now. My dad's trying to tell me, you know, when I used to study, I would read the textbook, and if I didn't understand the textbook, I would write it out. I'm like, Dad, there's two things wrong. First, no one uses textbooks. Second, when you studied for step one, scientists thought there were 48 chromosomes instead of 46. <laughs> But eventually I found my groove, and you know, I had really good days. I'd do my UWorld questions, do first aid. I even fit in 200 Anki cards, and I had time to take a nap. You want to know the secret? I fell asleep with my finger on the enter key. <laughs> uh, now, I'd be remiss not to welcome uh, the admitted students tonight. Welcome, I think you're all spectacular, no matter where you go. Some of you probably knew, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to AMS, this is the place. Some of you are thinking, eh, I'm not really digging this suburb of Boston. Uh, and then there's some of you really don't know, and that's okay, because you have that big, beautiful, sprawling spreadsheet with all the different schools, all the pluses and minuses, and at the end of my routine in the AMS column, you write down, ah yes, the cishet men think they're real funny here. <laughs> about academics is everything is an intersection. Everyone's working at like 10 intersections at once. Healthcare reform, uh, sex ed, maybe diabetes research in food deserts, or prison abolition, and social justice. Uh, and I've always been curious. I wonder if like, what if we talk about this in other parts of our life? Like, oh, I'm gonna go and get a haircut this weekend at the intersection of scissors and style. <laughs> or, you know, Oh, is, uh, is Brown going to give us breakfast tomorrow at the intersection of carbs and sugar? <laughs> and then, of course, there's Soul Cycle, the intersection of cardio and making sure everyone knows I do cardio. <laughs> My favorite part of medical school is, it's, it's really a meditative journey during these first two years. Meditation on the human body, and inevitably, someone you know gets sick in every organ system. I have friends who got a uh, kidney stone during renal, uh, someone had swollen lymph nodes unexplainably during hematology, and, you know, during GI, well, you know. Uh, yeah, that's right, you're gonna hear some real good poop jokes in medicine. But for me, uh, during pulmonology, the end of pulmonology, that, this is my story. So at the end of pulmonology, going on a long weekend hike, coming back feeling great, refreshed, then uh, in the evening I'm washing dishes and bam, fever and chills. I'm thinking, Ooh, probably I picked up something at Hasbro, but I go to sleep, feel better the next day, then again in the evening, bam, fever and chills. Ah, this is Lyme disease. <laughs> So I go to my doctor, he's a young guy, you know, take your doxy script and we'll throw in a chest x-ray just in case. So I finish the prescription, no problems there. I get this phone call that says, Dear Joseph, uh, you have some unexplained scarring at the apex of your lungs. I'm thinking, oh wow, uh, was it, did I finally pick up TB? Uh, maybe it was all that secondhand smoke in my undergrad dorm. Uh, no, no. It was probably some weird fungus in Western Massachusetts. No, no, this is what it is. Definitely idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. <laughs> now I am freaking out. Uh-oh. Uh, you know, this is it. This is what I'm going down. I'm probably not going to make 
until 40. I should just drop out of med school now, join a radical commune, and of course, it takes three weeks to get the pulmonology appointments. All during November, I'm freaking out. The macrophages are digesting my interstitia. <laughs> They get to the appointment, but it's only the nurse practitioner. I still, I give, I give them a whole story. You know, they're looking at the chest x-ray, kind of confused. This is a young, healthy guy. I don't really know. Go in. Okay, I'll, I'll do the physical exam now. I start taking off my shirt, and they're like, oh, no, no, you don't need to do that. I'm thinking, uh, I'm probably dying of sarcoidosis here. And you're, that's not even on your differential, because I'm white, and you're not going to hear Fabric. And you know, even with Obamacare and being on my parents' insurance, I'm not gonna have a chance at the end of this disease. Um, but so, get the CT, coming back, and again, it takes a while. And then a few days before Christmas, finally see the pulmonologist. Uh, office assistant lets me in the room. Uh, and on, on the way out, they go, oh, if you don't mind, uh, you have to take off your shirt. The, the pulmonologist is really traditional. Like, oh, no, I don't mind. That's just the basic standard of care. <laughs> Pulmonologist just comes in. I was looking at your CT. I didn't really see anything wrong. I think the radiologist was a little overzealous. He pulls up the uh, pulls up the screen, and there's like, yeah, there's just the tiniest, tiniest sliver of lung scarring. This is just just living your daily life. But I'll, I'll do a physical exam just in case to make sure everything's good. And folks, this is when I understood the art of medicine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, I've never heard that, but he, he's definitely hearing that. <laughs> Pulls back, take the stethoscope off, takes, takes the stethoscope off and says, I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> 